Okay, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the provocative, deliberately provocative uh, uh, title. It's, it's false. Uh, I, I think it speaks to the main stigma associated with standards, uh, and that's that it stifles innovation. And if there's one area in which you definitely don't want to stifle innovation, is quantum. So I've made a change, uh, a small change to this. And this is much more accurate, because stifle, uh, uh, standards are not going to tell you how to do something like quantum computing. They are supposed to make it easier to innovate. Uh, and I'm going to explain, hopefully, uh, how they do this. <coughs> now, uh, we've heard lots of talks today, uh, earlier, uh, 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 earlier in the day, uh, uh, about quantum computers and about how we can incorporate quantum into hyperscale data centers of the future. And one vision is, is this, that no quantum computers will, will not be replacing digital computers ever. They'll still remain, they'll always remain a minor minority, but they will complement uh, hyperscale data centers in the future. So you'll have these pockets of quantum, uh, qu you quantum as a service, where, you, uh, where they perform calculations that, that other digital computers are, are incapable of doing, very specific calculations, very specific problems. But the challenge here is how do you integrate them seamlessly into a hyperscale environment, so they work hand in hand with the HPC around them. So you'll have two things, you'll have pockets of quantum, quantum as a service, and you will even have quantum communication, obviously not within the data center, but if you're sending very confidential da da information uh, you know, at the edge uh, to the user or, or receiving it, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, you, 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 you'll need something like that. So quantum has a key role to play in hyperscale data centers of the future. And standardization is, extremely important as a way of, of uh, uh, for one thing, governing those interfaces to, to give us that ability to seamlessly integrate these, uh, these, uh, these different uh, technologies. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, international standards of quantum interconnect. Uh, to give you an overview of the last few years, uh, there have been attempts to, uh, th there have been sta uh, various standardization, small standardization groups looking to standa standardize different aspects of quantum technologies. And they've been disparate and they've been scattered and they've, uh, they've, they've, uh, th they've done some good work. I mean, you've had useful roadmaps and so on, but there's been nothing holistic. Uh, but at the beginning of this year, uh, uh, we formed the eyes of the UK National Committee, the British Science Institute, uh, proposed and launched the ISO IEC Joint Technical Committee uh, three quantum technologies. Now this may not sound si significant, but ISO and IEC are one of the one of the three uh, uh, w two of the three uh, international standards bodies in the world, and the only other ISO IEC Joint Technical Committee that's exist that exists is uh, information technology, and that's uh, the only one that's ever been uh, existed in the last uh, thirty years. There was a number two, which w which became obviously that's why it says Joint Joint Technical Committee three. But this is very, very important. This is a huge uh, a standards body covering most aspects of quantum technology. So it's very, very important. One thing, however, if you notice uh, uh, the scope uh, is uh, defined here, it explicitly excludes a variety of technologies, nanotechnology, and it explicitly excludes fiber optics. Uh, and, it and it refers to a, a, a technical committee, which I'll describe in a moment. Now, uh, it's not saying that fiber optics is irrelevant. Uh, what, what, uh, and I know because I asked the... BSI themselves, why did you exclude it? Uh, the reason for it is uh, this is one of the largest, fiber optics is one of the largest standards uh, groups there. And to get access to all those experts, uh, it would be difficult to expect them to, to attend yet another group of standardization meetings. So instead of this, the idea is that uh, activity is done in the fiber optics uh, uh, committee separately and then the, there's a liaison. So this is the main fiber optics committee, Tech Committee 86 of the IC. It's the largest fiber optics com committee in the world. You have three subcommittees. You have a subcommittee for uh, fibers and cables, a subcommittee for uh, connectors. I'm, I'm chair of the subcommittee at the moment of uh, sc 86 b And you have a subcommittee for, for uh, uh, active devices, which include photonic integrated circuits. So it covers the, the, the full range of fiber optic and photonic devices, hugely relevant to many, many aspects of quantum. Uh, over the last uh, uh, few years, I organized a few cr what were called cross-standard symposia. These were uh, symposia little conferences. This was during COVID, so they were all remote, most of them were remote, bringing together the, the main standards bodies, experts from the main standards bodies, to, to, uh, to, to look at quantum and see what needs to be standardized, where do we start. And a lot of useful information was garnered from that. One of the key pieces of information was, was optical interconnect, quantum-grade optical interconnect. Which is uh, which speaks to some uh, to, to quantum networks, 
which is uh, the most mature technology at the moment. QKD systems, you can buy them, for example. Uh, one great example of this uh, is shown here. Uh, if you're sending single photons or entangled photons, not, not pulses, but single photons and entangled photons, you need very the lowest loss fibers, you need the lowest loss connectors, far lower loss than, than current standards of life, because you don't want to disrupt the photon in any way. Every time you disrupt it, you destroy its quantum properties, and so it's, uh, it's not useful anymore. Uh, so uh, a whole ecosystem needs to exist around uh, quantum networks to, to enable quantum networks where you're sending entangled photons or single photons. And that'll include low-loss optical connectors, uh, uh, or, or wave wavelength routing, uh, very low-loss wavelength routing uh, 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 structures like AWGs, uh, special fibers. We heard recently from the University of Southampton, uh, you, you may be aware they've developed a new type of fiber called holocore fiber. Uh, which is now lower loss than uh, than even the, 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 the lowest loss standard fiber, and it's it's very nonlinear. You can send you can send uh, a variety of wavelengths through it, and you don't get any uh, nonlinear. Uh, you, you get no nonlinear uh, 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 performance, which is which is beneficial. <coughs> and uh, and uh, uh, and there are, as I mentioned, end-to-end uh, -end devices looking at QKD and so on. So so this is important. There's a whole ecosystem around quantum internet itself. Another part of this ecosystem is quantum photonic integrated circuits. Uh, uh, or, or there are some uh, quantum computing companies, Orca, Psi Quantum, uh, Quicks, Quicks uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, which use photonic effects for quantum computing. Uh, it's there in a minority, but, but some, 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 uh, some uh, 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 companies use that. And also for uh, QKD, a lot of those companies are using photonic effects. And you need photonics prim primarily. You need optical interconnects. Uh, to, to, to carry your single photons across appreciable distances. So, you m so optics is fundamental to quantum. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm sure most of you, but a photonic integrated circuit, it's an integrated circuit in which uh, you have structures which interview the ability to guide light and the ability to change the speed of light. And if you combine these two capabilities, you can do a variety of things. You can modulate light, you can split it, you can redirect it according to wavelength. Uh, and, and, and many other things. And there are also a variety of platforms for this. Silicon is, is the most common. Uh, silicon uh, indium phosphide uh, as, a, as a laser source. Silicon nitride is, pre is, is quite preferred for uh, uh, quantum applications because it's very, very low loss. Uh, and uh, silica glass po uh, and for, for phase modulation, electro-optic polymers, lithium niobate, and barium titanate are some key examples. And there are a variety of applications, optical transceivers. You may have uh, seen earlier in the day uh, in the optics track a lot of talks about uh, using silicon photonics for optics transceivers. Uh, and, uh, but there are other applications, WM switching, neuromorphic computing, wearable diagnostic sensors, LiDAR, and, uh, and uh, uh, quantum, uh, quantum uh, uh, technologies. So in IEC, one thing we have done, I one thing I, uh, 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 we did was we, we've we're about to publish a uh, what's called a technical report, this quantum interconnect uh, introduction to roadmap for standardization. It, it doesn't seem like much, but the point of this technical report is it, it sets the, uh, the, the, the groundwork for a proposal we are about to make for a new working group in, uh, in IEC. And this working group will be uh, a working group for quantum interconnect. So this is looking at all aspects of fiber, uh, fiber optics as they, uh, as they relate to quantum. And it, is and it will be strategically extremely important because the main ISO IEC Joint Technical Committee does not address this at all. So this will be an extremely important uh, group. It's it, it, it will be proposed in, a, in two weeks formally, uh, very likely to be accepted. Uh, and when it's formed, it'll, it'll start looking at a variety of standards I'll show you in a moment. But it'll, it'll sit at the, at, at the top level of TC86. It won't be in any of the subcommittees. It'll span all the subcommittees. That means it relates to photonic integrated circuits, to fiber connectors, to fiber cables, and so on. So here's an example of some of the, uh, the, 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 the most important areas that we will, we'd look to standardize. Quantum grade optical connectors, very low loss optical connectors. Quantum grade optical fibers, very low attenuation fibers. Low loss, high isolation passive optical routers like AWGs. Uh, uh, because uh, if you're going to use, for example, uh, the same networks for uh, classical and, uh, and quantum communication, you need the ability to bypass <coughs> single photons. Uh, uh, you, you need to be able to bypass EDFAs, amplifiers, and so on, because that will destroy the quantum properties. So uh, you need very low loss uh, wavelength routing for that. High isolation optical fibers don't let in any uh, ambient light. 
quantum photonic integrated circuit coupling. You want, you know, extremely low, uh, you, you want benchmarks for extremely low fiber to pit coupling. And we saw a great talk by, uh, by Senko uh, uh, I in the last hour uh, uh, looking at exactly such an example. Quantum sources and detectors, single photon sources, interconnected cryogenic environments, etc. So there's a large ecosystem there that this will start to address and strategically very, very important. Now, uh, just I'll just finish off by talking about some of the quantum projects you, you heard from, from Andrew Meek before in, in, in Senko about some of these. Uh, I just want to show uh, a, f uh, a few more examples of this uh, because it speaks to this. Uh, there was an old project, Cupic Pack, which finish finished uh, recently, and uh, Andrew showed some of these pictures of their CUDA form connector, which was connected to uh, a quantum pick. One of the standards that we'd be, we'd be looking at is, uh, as I said, performance benchmarks to say, to define you know, the minimum coupling uh, uh, losses between fibers and the quantum pick, and they have to be quite low. Uh, and here's a nice picture uh, as well of the a demo. Now we are about to start Equinox. Uh, Resolute Photonics is leading Equinox, uh, and it's an 18-month uh, uh, UK government uh, project. Seagate are, uh, are are also lead partners. Senko, NPL, Wave Photonics, Cornerstone. And the purpose of this, in a nutshell, and I can't go into detail, but is essentially we are developing building blocks interchangeable modular building blocks allowing us to take different quantum uh, uh, technologies and interconnect them in different ways. So I'll have much more to say about that in the future, but uh, that's what I can say at the moment. So just to conclude, quantum technologies are becoming a mainstream technology and there is a strong need for standardization. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, new uh, 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 quantum interconnect group that we're about to, to launch will be strategically hugely important. So we'll look forward to uh, contributions from the com uh, community. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Richard. And I just have one last call to action for everybody that I'd like to show. And uh, that'll conclude our uh, session for today. And I want to thank everyone who uh, attended. Uh, some attended all the time. I had people coming and going all through the day and afternoon, and I appreciate that as well. Um, all the I think you all know this is all being recorded, and and within the next uh, week, within the next week, it'll all be available slides and recordings on the internet, on the on the internet. Uh, let's see if this is going to come up. Looks good. And so I. Uh, Okay, I got it. And so what I want to let you know is we are starting to think about 2025 and that we will be looking to do uh, something around quantum uh, at our regional summit that's going to be in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, we'll be back here in San Jose next year uh, in October 2025. Uh, we are working on a joint white paper uh, trying to tackle some of the issues that we've identified around uh, standardizations and problems that and best practices for putting quantum equipment next to hybrid equipment next to classical equipment and we'll continue to work that uh, joint white paper and we hope to share that later this year we're also uh, potentially looking to start an FTI work stream around quantum and uh, we would be looking for people who might like to step up and lead such a work stream, uh, trying to tackle some of the ongoing problems that we'll be dealing with in quantum computing moving forward. The other thing is there is an Innovation Village demonstration upstairs on the exhibit floor uh, this evening and all day tomorrow where there's a quantum station and I think there are three demonstrations, one by Senco on uh, quantum connectors, one by the Lawrence Berkeley Lab on their quantum control uh, device, and one by QSight for quantum random number generation. So if you have a few minutes, it's probably worth passing by the Innovation Village upstairs and taking a look. Thank you very much, everyone.